So let's think about risk mitigation for a second. I want to make sure I'm good, good here on time. Risk mitigation. Futures can be a game changer with respect to risk mitigation. Let's see what we mean by that. So here's some interesting, these are just kind of stats, but intraday buying power needed, and I know you're thinking, oh my God, where's he going with this? Intraday buying power needed per dollar of delta, meaning how expensive is it to make an adjustment using stocks, options, or futures? And I don't think you've ever seen this presented this way, but to adjust a position, in other words, to adjust one share of stock using futures costs $3. To adjust one share of stock using stocks costs $65 on average. And to adjust one share of stock equivalent using options costs $100. Therein lies the beauty of this product. It's a different regulatory body. So it's, that's why you wonder, well, how can one person do it for something and, and somebody else do it for, you know, for a different amount? Different regulatory bodies. But when you look at these numbers here, you're like, wow, that does make a big difference, especially if I'm adjusting or I'm protecting a position. So to control one delta, we need different amounts of buying power for each asset class. So futures, as you can see here, are the most efficient use of, you know, of buying power. $3 versus $65 versus $100 for the equivalent of one share of stock. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you said when you started this thing off that, you know, 70% of your trades are options, 20, 25% are futures, and maybe 5% are stocks. Why, why is that? Why don't you just do 100% in futures? Because I love stocks. I like equities. I like equity options, and I like trading the different volatilities. I like trading the different asset classes. I like all the other stuff. I like the different sizes. But there's no such thing anymore. You've, I've heard people give speeches that go, I'm a futures trader. There's no such thing. I'm an option trader. There's no such thing. I'm a stock trader. There's no such thing anymore. Anybody that's not using all these products in combination or complementary to each other, you're not getting it. There's no way to be successful anymore if you're not using all the products. And I know it's a it's sometimes it's about the amount of money you have and sometimes it takes time to step up and I get all that. But just sitting here and understanding how this stuff works, it's so important because you realize I got to get there. I have to create wealth to get there. So one of the things that we do like the futures marketplace for is that it creates opportunities to trade underlyings that are very hard to trade using stocks. So we put up here are the most active futures markets. So I have S&Ps, Euro, crude, gold, silver, nat gas, corn, soybeans, wheat, 30-year bonds, and the 10-year notes. For most of those products, except the S&Ps and maybe crude and gold, there's not much in the ETF world, like for soybeans, corn, uh, wheat, 30-year bonds, 10-year notes, or any of that kind of stuff. But when you look at those numbers, and again, you don't have to study this thing and I'll send it to you, but when you look at those correlation numbers and you see that if you're long, for example, bonds and the market does what it's done the last couple of days, you made money. Believe me, I'm no bond bull, but the markets and the bonds are different. If you were long gold the last couple of days, you lost very little because the correlation to stocks is, you know, it, the, the correlation from gold and stocks in this thing, let's see where we are right now, is 0.17 or whatever it is. I'm probably looking at backwards. But, but the, the, the point is that on this chart here, you can see all the different correlations and you can make some judgments for yourself. Hey, what fits me? Hey, you know what? If I use natural gas here and natural gas has been going straight up and crude oil has been going straight down, that relationship's getting back to near record levels, that potential pairs trade, or just there's no correlation between those two. And all of a sudden it's interesting. You've got all these other things to think about and look for opportunity with. So true diversification requires the use, and you heard me say this last night, of different listed liquid underlyings, different strategies, and different durations. If you want to be successful over a long period of time, and, and you know what, I don't do this because, you know, we do this because we want to see you coming back here in 15 years, in 10 years, in five years, in 20 years, whatever it is. And in order to do that, you have to mix it up. So how do you mix it up truly? Is just products mixing it up? And the answer is no. You have to mix up products. Everything has to be liquid. You have to mix up durations, and you have to mix up strategies. 
It's hard to mix up strategies when you limit yourself to a small group. Like, it's difficult to trade 10-year notes using ETFs. But you can trade 10-year notes and risk a very small amount of money using, like, for example, an option strategy in the 10-year notes that you couldn't get that diversification in the listed marketplace. That's neat. So underlyings that qualify, stock options, futures and futures options, any product that is exchange listed and centrally cleared, and any product that has two-sided liquidity. So when you're, talking about, when you're talking about true diversification, anything that's liquid, anything that's liquid, anything that's listed and centrally cleared, we're open to. And what we found is that customer activity, once they understand how to use these products in a non-pure speculative way. So in other words, in the old days, you know, 98% of the people or 99% of the people that trade futures go out of business. Or don't, they don't go out of business, they just lose their money and they get sick of it. Futures customers never survived in the retail space. The trading floor has no traders left. The traders that were on the trading floor didn't learn how to trade futures because they learned how to take advantage of opportunities in the pits, but they never learned how to actually trade the products because trading to them was just black and white, but they're no longer there. So the customers and the people that use futures now have incorporated into all these different strategies and their, their own various forms of pairs trading, little, little bits of arbitrage, hedging, static delta, offsets against liquid ETFs, and true diversification. Strategies that qualify. Any opportunity that differentiates itself from a pure passive play. Anything that's not passive is interesting. Strategies for futures include static hedges, pairs trading, scalping, arbitrage, inter-month inter spreads, and various option strategies. There's almost no futures option strategy that you can do in IBM or in Apple or in Google or Amazon that you can't do in the euro or the bonds or the S&Ps or net gas. Durations that qualify. Any strategy from one day, or any approach from one day to 120 days. Preferred durations are 20 to 60 days. Optimal duration is 45 days, the same as it is for equities. And duration has to be indifferent to product. Forget that seasonal stuff. Every underlying futures is its own, is its, is its own essential product is its own essential trade, its own essential underline. So what's important to take away from here is that duration, again, we're indifferent to duration. The active month is the most important month. So probabilities that qualify for this discussion. Any basket or portfolio of trades that nets an average probability of over 50%. Whatever you do, try to make sure that your portfolio has a little bit of probabilistic edge. When we say over 50%, doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you think it has over a 50% chance of going higher, a 50% chance of over a 50% chance of going lower. What it means is that you've applied some strategy and basis reduction to that to give yourself real, a real math equation that delivers a probabilistic expectation of greater than 50%. Preferred portfolio probabilities should be around 65% same as it is for options and same as it is for all trading. And the optimal probability should carry a theoretical average of about 75%. That's what you're targeting for. Futures are no different than any strategy you might have in Apple or Netflix or Tesla. Absolutely zero difference. You just have to reduce your size. Takeaways. The lowest, I'm sorry, the use Use the lowest capital requirements available for individual static delta adjustments and adding non-correlated positions. You know, if you have an opportunity to put a trade on and use significantly less capital in trade A than trade B, and all the other numbers are exactly the same, then do trade B. Do the one that requires the least amount of capital if everything else lines up the same. Because again, you're putting yourself in a position to the, 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 the amount of capital you commit and the amount of capital you have on the sidelines gives you the most amount of opportunity. Strategic diversification is as important to successful um, portfolio growth as anything else. So therefore, using capital for strategies outperforms using capital for underlyings. 
One of the things that drives us crazy about passive investing in general is there's no leverage and 100% of capital is being used. So you're fully in. The only drag is cash, which makes absolutely no sense in a world of, of, of strategic investing. The first thing you learn when using any kind of these futures products or any bit of this discussion that we're having here today is that the ability to have strategic diversification when you're using less capital, it's apparent to you instantaneously. And then you can do so much more stuff. And for me, that's probably the biggest takeaway. That, that took me the longest period of time to understand. When I first started this business, the only thing we ever used futures for was for speculating and then hedging. But, but the speculation piece is where we thought we made all the money. The hedging piece we thought was a necessity. Today, the speculation piece is almost non-existent. And it's the strategic piece, because the hedging piece is not that relevant when you're a customer. So the strategic piece is the most important piece to futures trading, and that didn't even exist 20 to 25 years ago. But now, individual investors, individual customers trade more. So here's an interesting stat. When we first launched futures trading with our last platform almost 17 years ago, the average size customer futures trade was a little over two contracts. The average size customer trade today is just over one contract, which means that in the last 17 years, we have we've kind of flipped the business upside down and we've convinced individual investors to trade smaller, to be much smarter and to be much more strategic and to use less notional, have less notional risk per trade. Nobody understood notional risk 17 years ago. Today, with the technology that you have, people understand it, it's awesome. Futures are the most resource efficient way to neutralize beta weighted portfolio deltas. So this morning, I came in and I, I'm sorry, I didn't come in. I, I woke up here and I looked at my platform. First thing I do is I kind of, you know, open my eyes and look at my platform. It's a sickness. It's nothing to be proud of. You know, some people wake up in the morning, they look at their loved ones or they do all, all these other things first. I look at my platform. It's not healthy. Um, and the first thing I noticed was, okay, um, I'm a little bit, I'm not short enough is my first thought that went through my head. So how do I know that? Well, I look at my beta weighted deltas, which takes every single thing that I have on and converts it to a single number. So I look at that number and immediately, okay, because at five in the morning here or four in the morning here, you know, there's not a lot of things you can do. So the first thing you do at that point is, okay, futures are up, I'm not short, short enough. So the first thing you do is, okay, well, maybe I'll just add some deltas. That's why, and they're resource efficient and they can either neutralize or give you exactly the beta weighted efficiency into what you want even before the market opens. And it's theoretically perfect. There's no room, there's no, there's no error anymore. The, the technology today is so good that when you make a beta weighted adjustment, let's say for example, you wake up in the morning and, you, you're, and your position before the market opens is showing you long 500, 500 spider deltas, which means you're long 500 shares of stock. And you say, you know what? I don't feel like taking any risk today. So you sell one S&P future. You're flat. Take the rest of the day off. I mean, obviously you have other risk when the market opens and you'll see what happens. But at that instant, you are theoretically flat. And you've used $6,000 of your capital to do it. Or intraday, you've used $1,600 of your capital to do that. Nobody thinks that way. Nobody's ever thought that way. But now individual investors are starting to think that way. Let's say you wake up this morning and all of a sudden, for the first time in a number of years, natural gas is trading over $4. And you say, you know what? I'm gonna sell us, I feel like getting short natural gas, but I don't wanna you know, wait for the stock market to open. So the next thing you do is you sell a call spread in natural gas at five o'clock in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm short natural gas, that was easy. I'm bringing this up because part of this, you know, part of what we do with a statistical chance of success, if you sold an out of the money spread, you know, that works the exact same way as if you sold a spread in Tesla. If you sell a natural gas spread where you collect $1 on a $3 wide spread, you are risking the difference or $2, which multiplied out would be $2,000. But, but my point is that the difference is the width of the strikes minus the credit you receive. And then the statistical chance of success is the amount that you collect 
versus the width of the strikes inverted. So if you collect a dollar on a $3 wide spread, whether you're trading natural gas or you're trading Tesla, either one, the statistical chance of success is 66.5%. Works the same no matter what product it is. That's what's so interesting. I think I went to my, I did. So I went to my last slide and I'm exactly at 2.15. I thank you all. <laughs>